what are the causes for failed retinal detachment surgery? This is Dr. Anina Abraham from Advanced Retina Care, Hyderabad. First of all, there are two types of retinal detachments, mainly regmatogenous and tractional retinal detachment. Regmatogenous retinal detachment simply means there is a break in the retina, probably a hole, a tear, or a lattice that has caused fluid to get under the retina and separate the retina. So this is called a regmatogenous retinal detachment. This is caused by a break in the retina. So when your surgeon operates, if he's not able to find all the breaks responsible for this retinal detachment, it will end up in a failed surgery. So it's very important for the surgeon to look for all the breaks when he is operating. Second reason could be because the vitreous or the jelly inside the eye is not completely removed during vitrectomy. Parts of the vitreous remain there and probably some, in some cases PVD is not induced completely. PVD is a posterior vitreous detachment, which is very important in any vitrectomy. It is important to remove the entire vitreous. And if this is not done again, it can cause pull on the brakes and it can again cause a failed retinal detachment surgery. Another reason could be because the brakes are located inferiorly. Inferior brakes have a tendency to open up so what I recommend is cryotherapy to those breaks because cryotherapy works very well, much better than laser therapy for these breaks. Positioning is extremely important after the surgery. If post-operative positioning is not done by the patient, it is possible that the retina redetaches. There is something called PVR or proliferative vitreoretinopathy. In this condition, membranes form over the retina, under the retina, and literally pull off the retina. This is a very bad stage. If you have come to the doctor in such a stage, the chances of recovery is very, very less. The chances of failure is very high. So again, if the surgery has failed, it's because you have come to the doctor in a very, very late stage of retinal detachment. There are cases in which the choroid also detaches and not just the retina. The choroid is a layer behind the retina. And if you have a choroidal detachment along with a retinal detachment, the chance of success is less. Another type of retinal detachment is tractional retinal detachment, which is seen in diabetics. Diabetic retinopathy can end up as a tractional retinal detachment. Why does this fail? This fails mainly because when operating, the surgeon tends to create breaks on those membranes which are pulling up the retina. It is very important to be careful not to create a single break on the retina because the moment there is a break, it bleeds and it gets pulled off again and it ends up as a failure. Also, increased bleeding. If you have not given an injection prior to the surgery. An anti-VEGF injection is a must prior to the surgery to reduce the risk of intraoperative bleeding. In spite of this, there are some cases which bleed like anything, probably because they are on blood thinners, and that could be another reason for the surgery to fail. Again, a complete vitrectomy is essential. The vitreous, especially the posterior hyaloid phase, has to be removed. And the best way to do it is actually to peel it off with the cutter. Apart from this, another reason for failure could be raised intraocular pressure and optic disc pallor. During the surgery, there are times where we need to increase the intraocular pressure, and if you've done it for a very long time, it is possible that the disc becomes very pale. Blood flow is compromised to the retina, and vision never comes back. So these are all the reasons why a retinal detachment surgery fails.